For this video, I'm going to take you on a full hotel tour of the Flamingo Water Park Resort located in Kissimmee, Florida. As a content creator, I'm constantly evolving and trying to, you know, reinvent the channel, trying to find new ways to uh, keep it fresh and different. And one of the ways I've decided to do that was to start um, covering water parks, which is something I generally didn't do. About a year ago, I started reviewing hotels kind of on a whim. It's not something I had planned to do. I've actually been shocked at how popular the hotel reviews have become. Um, it's one of the reasons why the channel has grown so much in the last year. So today I traveled down to Kissimmee, Florida, and this is the first time I've ever reviewed a so-called water park resort. So starting probably about 20 years ago, a lot of investors would take older hotels and basically add uh, water park features to a hotel to kind of revitalize it and rebrand it. And that's an example of the Flamingo Water Park Resort. This hotel was originally built in 1966 and the uh, the newer phase was built in 1975 but the buildings here are very old and in 2008 they uh, added the uh, water slide tower and the lazy river the kiddie play area as well as the splash pads it was definitely an attempt to keep the hotel alive and they had mixed results with it before i really jump into the heart of the review i'd like to say that i had a very pleasant stay here at the uh, flamingo it was quiet and peaceful and I knew the the age of the property before I booked so I really didn't have any unrealistic expectations and I was quite happy with my stay. Now when talking about these water park resorts in Central Florida it's kind of murky because there's so many resorts that have uh, water slides but not necessarily um, build themselves as water park resorts for example you know, Bonnet Creek and Gaylord Palms and uh, Marriott World Center, they all have, um, you know, kind of lazy rivers and uh, slide towers, but they don't really push the, uh, the water park resorts. There are really only two others that market themselves specifically as water park resorts, and that's uh, Coco Key that's on International Drive, as well as the former Nickelodeon Hotel that's now uh, rebranded as the Holiday Inn Water Park Resort. So Flamingo is kind of carving out the budget option and they undercut Coco Key and the Holiday Inn Water Park Resort roughly by about 40 bucks a night. In my opinion, I think Flamingo does charge, you know, a reasonable room rate. With the resort fee, you're looking at about $100 a night. And when you go to Holiday Inn or Coco Key, it's anywhere from 140 to 175 a night. So for this particular resort, I think the, uh, the level of satisfaction really comes down to what type of person you are. If you buy your clothing at Walmart like I do, you're probably going to have a great time. If you are kind of a designer label person, you'll probably be unhappy with Flamingo Water Park Resort and most likely be one of the people who post one of those negative reviews on like Hotels.com or Priceline. The water park here is average. That's it. Just average. And uh, if you compare it to Coco Key or the Holiday Inn Water Park Resort, uh, those are bigger and better water parks. Flamingo just has the one water slide tower, and there's three body slides on it, and only one of them is probably worth riding. The, uh, the open flume is pretty decent, but the other two body slides are nothing to call them about. Uh, the drop slide is terrible, honestly. The, uh, the closed flume... I think there used to be special effects that lit up inside the tunnel and uh, they've all gone dark, I guess for lack of maintenance. So it's just not a great experience. Uh, only the open flume is really worth riding. I do have links for each water slide POV uh, in the description for this video so you can basically review them and see what I'm talking about. I think most kids would still enjoy this water park even if it is kind of, you know, average. Uh, but if you are also going to like Volcano Bay or Typhoon Lagoon or uh, Blizzard Beach on this trip, then it might become a problem because uh, this water park definitely would pale by comparison to the big theme parks. Another elephant in the room that I have to mention is the location itself. The Flamingo Water Park Resort is located right next to the entrance and exit to the Florida Turnpike on Highway 192. So people were probably saying to themselves, well that sounds pretty convenient. And, eh, not really. For starters, Highway 192 really isn't the tourist corridor for 
Walt Disney World anymore. Uh, International Drive has become just the more popular place to stay. But the major issue is Flamingo Water Park Resort is located on the wrong end of Highway 192. You see, the big tourist corridor of Highway 192 is located in an area known as Main Gate. And that is where the entrance of World Drive is located. And that's the road you take into uh, the Magic Kingdom and Epcot and Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios. Unfortunately, the Flamingo Water Park Resort isn't located anywhere near Main Gate. It's basically almost on the other side of the county. So if you're booking at the Flamingo Water Park Resort for your Disney vacation, you'll quickly realize that it's a 24 mile drive from Flamingo Water Park Resort to the front gates of Magic Kingdom. With traffic on most days, you're looking at a 35 to 45 minute drive in each direction. I think that drive is probably farther than most families want to endure. And again, it's uh, just the wrong end of 192. All the really fun attractions that are located directly on 192, like Margaritaville or uh, Island H2O, uh, even Old Town, they're all miles away from here. So if you're a person that doesn't like to drive or a convenient location is really important to you, uh, you're going to be much happier at a Coco Key or uh, the Holiday Inn Water Park Resort. To enter the water park, there's a concierge at the front of the park that also hands out towels, and she will check to make sure you have an armband. When you book for a night, you get four armbands, so if you have a family of four, it's perfect. However, just be aware, I broke two of these armbands because, you know, I was on the, the water slides all day, and uh, just, I don't know, I tore two of the four, so they're not the most durable things around. So if you have kids that uh, break stuff all the time, only getting four armbands might become a problem. As for the hotel room itself, it was pretty average. Nothing that really stood out, but also nothing that really bothered me. I mean, the beds were comfortable. Uh, the sheets were kind of thin and cheap, but, you know, again, this is the budget option, so I didn't really expect anything else. This is the first time I ever went to a hotel where they actually have a price list of all the items and how much they cost if you decide to steal them. <laughs> I've never seen that before, it's at least posted in the, the bathroom like this place did. Flamingo pretty much had every amenity in the hotel room that you would expect. They had the hair dryer and the, the mini fridge and the, the microwave oven. I mean, there was really nothing that they lacked. Even though the buildings date back to the 60s or 70s, they did a pretty admirable job renovating the place, so it doesn't feel as old as it actually is. But the aesthetics are definitely dated, um, and if you're used to, like, Disney or Universal properties, then uh, you're going to definitely feel like you're slumming a little bit. So what's my bottom line for the Flamingo Water Park Resort? I would rate this about a 6 to maybe a 6.5 out of 10, with 10 being the best. It's a little better than most budget hotels in Orlando. This place does have a nice arcade. Uh, the on-site restaurant was closed and I don't think it's going to reopen. This place is just a mixed bag overall. Thanks for joining me on this hotel tour of the Flamingo Water Park Resort. If you enjoyed this episode of The Adventure Schmuck, don't forget to like and subscribe.